you have experience with that in terms of the waiting and such, we've had that conversation. Yeah, so um, the, the balance scorecard doesn't yield a GPA on the first thing. So each metric is kind of taken, uh, you know, I, I think what I want to do as a taxpayer, as a consumer of these data, is I want to understand that the district is transparently tracking metrics and sharing kind of outcomes. Um, so it's a great question. I don't know that any system in the country we work with or you know that is doing this work kind of considers a weighting. If there was any kind of weight level given, um, you know, I think it'd be worthwhile to kind of think about what priorities are. But uh, you know, uh, obviously student student elements would be a higher weight, but I don't see any weighting happening on that basis. Does that help answer your question? Thank you, Adam. Any other questions from the board on the balance scorecard presentation? Seeing none, oh, I see one back there, Jane. Thanks, Travis. I was wondering, um, from the data collection piece of it, do we know if, or are we suspecting or asking the students who have graduated for them to have opted into all this data collection after they're no longer a graduate of the school system? or are we going to continue to track them, it looks like, and it sounds like from this documentation that we're looking to track students after they've graduated, I would assume that for the privacy reasons, we may or may not want to do that, but are we going to be tracking them post-graduation? So looking at uh, the clearinghouse that we currently have, which is the post-secondary clearinghouse, and seeing where students are tracking after they graduate from high school, um, there's not going to be any more identifiable information that we currently have from the clearinghouse. So student privacy is still not going to be uh, anything that's violated. As far as once they've graduated and moved on from this, um, again, just tracking a number, not a person, but just identifying are you in a two year school, are you in a four year school, and collecting that most likely in honesty um, is the way we're going to go. We'll continue to go as they've been doing. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ryan. Any other board members have questions about the balance scorecards? Seeing none, Dr. Ryan, we will move on to the portrait of an educator presentation, please.
long way. Folks, if I could speak, I would appreciate it. So we have sent home the group. Folks, if you would let me, if you would let me speak just for one moment. So we certainly don't want the folks that have been working for again 12 or 18 months on a very important initiative for our district to present really in front of that type of um, reaction. They have nothing to do with what you folks are here for, and it would be unfortunate to have them present that and, and, and have that kind of reaction. So they've actually left. They've been sent We're home. here because of all so, of you. So that presentation is not going to take place at this point. We know why the majority of you are here to speak about something that, again, is not the purview of the joint board. It's the purview of the cooperative board, which oversees the high school and the middle school. If I could ask the individual that had the microphone to return it back to the microphone stand. I'm not sure where that microphone disappeared to back here. Everyone should go to Adam's webpage, the guy that presented, tworevolutions.net. He says that our education system is purposely racist. Thank you for returning the microphone. CRT! CRT! So we are going to open up the floor for our public comments. We are going to, because of the number of people here, to give everybody an equal opportunity to share their thoughts. We're going to limit public comment to two minutes. And again, that's for your benefit, so that everybody that wants to speak something has the opportunity to do that. So if you could please step up to the microphone if you would like to share any thoughts with the joint board. I would simply ask that you state your name and the account within SU16 that you reside so that the minutes can accurately reflect that. Sure, I, I would like to at least start by respectfully requesting that all school board members turn and face. I see that some of you are, that's excellent. I appreciate that. Um, so facing us would you start. So my name is Alicia Houston. I'm a parent advocate in New Hampshire. I am here to stand with and for the New Hampshire children here in Exeter. Alicia, what town are you from? I'm sorry. Nashua. So we has to be residents of Mississippi. Okay, 15. that's perfect. So one key takeaway that I have okay. is that I've heard a number of times that you've mentioned that they are customers. Now, the definition through the Webster Dictionary of a customer is one that buys goods and services as a store of business. I'm standing in front of you today. Each one of you, elected officials, have interpreted your role incorrectly. Not only are the parents and children and taxpayers not your customers, they are in fact your employer. Yeah. Yeah. As a courtesy reminder, the wants and needs of your community, of your community members you work for them. It is time that those of you sitting here today that were elected to serve at the pleasure of your constituents, your constituents are here, we are here. With their support, we stand as one, and you work for them. Do your jobs. So again, public comment should be for residents within SU16. Uh, and again, to give everybody an opportunity, we're already limited to two minutes, so thank you for being brief with those comments. But SU16 residents, please. And again, if you could state your name in the town within the districts that you live for the minutes. Of course, certainly. Uh, Marion Casey, Brentwood, New Hampshire. Um, I'm just making a comment. We have plenty to say. I'm just making a quick comment here. Um, been in the district 20 years, raising my three children here. I've done the baseball mom, the hockey mom, Girl Scout troop leader thing. I've been a Eucharistic minister at St. Mike's in Exeter for over a decade. I dined, I partied, I hosted, and I rallied with hundreds of people in this district over 20 years. What I need you to know is that just because we started a movement for school choice, choice, that's all we did, and the members of the group that started that, with myself, 
Do not make us villains. Doesn't make us your enemy. We are not your enemy. We are the same humans in this community that carpool, rally for a sick child, are there when a parent passes, or stop at a roadside if somebody's having car trouble. We as humans in this district have lost our way. When did that happen? And I look at all of you. When did that happen? When did having an opinion that freedom renders us make us enemies? We've all lost our way. When did speaking up for what we believe is good and moral and right for our own children make us enemies? We've lost our way. When did our school board, who literally exists to be the voice of the parents, when? and the goals and the wishes of the majority of parents you serve. When? <laughs> You've lost your way. You've lost your way. When did canceling, not fairly representing all parents in some fashion become the norm? You've lost your way. Marianne, thank you so when, much. I'm not I, finished. I got I another, understand. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get everybody yeah. out of When did a modicum of decency, when did the modicum of decency not be afforded the taxpaying parents of this district? You've lost your way. You are here to represent us. You're here to be entrusted with what is best for all children, all of our children. No need to get into the nitty gritty of the past year. We all know it. We all lived it. All children were not represented. A small majority of the, a small minority of the children were represented. The rest of the 10,000 parents in this district were shut down, canceled, and tossed a bone with an, embar with an embarrassing Q&A session over Zoom. Yep. Is what we got all year long, okay? And for the record, New Hampshire has never, ever followed CDC guidelines as a mandate. They are recommendations. And they are 